Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who created all things and therefore has power over all things. Um, I want to talk on, on this topic concerning, you know, the devil and demons, just to take a look at uh, what's in the word concerning our warfare with the spirit realm, their tactics, things like that. And then also, um, this study ended up being way larger than I thought it would be, and it could surely be even larger still. But I had to pull a portion out of it concerning sacrificing to demons, which was very interesting to me. Like, I just got a huge revelation, and I will be sharing that in my next video, God willing. Uh, but I wanted to finish up this one. It's just the basics, you know, that we would be safe, um, you know, and have, have the wisdom of God for our battle. But anyways, let's get into it. So we're going to look at uh, Luke ten eighteen, And this was the words of the Lord. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And I found that very interesting because in Revelations 12, 9, it says, The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devils come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. So I, I always wondered why did it say he fell as lightning, you know, from heaven. And I get it now, because he was cast out. Okay, him and his angels, they were cast out hard and fast, like lightning. Boom, done. Okay, but it's letting us know here he comes down, he's cast down to the earth. And he has great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. And this just goes to show us that God is in control. God has informed him he only has a short time. Because Satan really is God's tool in his creation. Okay, we know from scripture also that he is the God of this world. Um, it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4, If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we see from these two scriptures, up here he deceives the whole world. Here he's blinded the minds of those which believe not, which we know are the world. Okay, Because you're either in the kingdom of the world or you're in the kingdom of Christ. Okay, And then in John 10.10 10, we're told the thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. And what is Jesus? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, there's only life and truth in Christ. Um, and that, those are the very things that Satan wants to hinder us from. Um, the Lord said to the Pharisees in John 8, 44, You of your father the devil, the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay, so we know that Satan from the beginning was a murderer. And if he from the beginning didn't abide in the truth, then we know he was also from the beginning a liar. Um, but you can look at, um, you know, his murdering capabilities. When you look at Cain, how he, he killed Abel. Um, Saul, you know, trying to kill David. The word tells us specifically that was an evil spirit, you know, sent to Saul that tried to kill David. Um, when Herod killed all the babies that were under two, um, all these people were influenced by evil spirits. Okay, and in John 13, 2, it says, And supper being ended, the devil, having put, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So we see here, you know, the devil working directly through Judas Iscariot, you know, to uh, get the Lord, you know, arrested. Um, and then, you know, the big, big lie, okay, the biggest lie from the beginning, okay, because he was a liar from the beginning. What, what does Satan say when he's deceiving Eve? He says, you shall not surely die. And that is still to this day the biggest lie because you have all kinds of people in this earth thinking they're going to have eternal life. They're going to heaven to be with God. Yet it's completely outside of Christ, completely outside of truth. Okay, they've been deceived. Okay, and and all the all the demons in Satan. Okay, they are the enemies of truth and righteousness. Um, and I think this is declared well in this Acts thirteen seven through eleven. 
Um, it starts out kind of weird, you know, but I, I didn't want to, I'm trying to keep this short. But it says, uh, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. And this is what I wanted to point out in this. He desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so was his name by interpretation, he withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety, that being deceit, and all mischief, that being ill will and harm. Okay, you child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? So we can see from these things here that, you know, the, the all all the spirit realm the evil spirit realm okay is against righteousness against the right ways of the lord against the truth and they just live to turn people from god to sin that your penalty might be death okay in first john three 15 we're told whosoever hates his brother is a murderer you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him and by this we know that satan does not have eternal life because he was a murderer from the beginning and he's still murdering we know from scripture he has no love in him he has no truth in him he has no life in him okay and then uh you know from scripture it's they're always working in opposition to the word of god so if we look at matthew 16 21 it says from that time forth began jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to jerusalem suffer many things of the elders the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day then Peter took him and bent, began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned, and he said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, you are an offense unto me, for you savor not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Notice here, like the word tells us, we don't battle flesh and blood. Jesus knew he wasn't battling Peter. Okay, And it's interesting, he says, Satan is an offense to him. He's a snare, he's a stumbling block. Because if you think about it, even when Jesus was fasting, Satan took him up on a pinnacle of the temple and he said, Oh, look, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all these things, you know. So he's always trying to trip up, you know, the righteous, always. That's, that's his game, day and night. So we need to understand the wiles and the devices of the devil so that we can, you know, be safe and, and we know what we're fighting exactly. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11 tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that being the methodia, the methods of the devil. Now, we have to understand being strong in the Lord and the power of his might has nothing to do with us, okay? And when it says put on the whole armor of God, it's the same as saying put on Christ. Put on Christ, okay? Because there's no... Nothing we can do of ourselves. He is the strength of us. You know, it is his authority he's given us that by which we can, you know, get the victory. Um, and it tells us in that same chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And some uh, translations, they translate this wicked one. So whether you want to look at it as Satan or Satan and his angels or just even, even the wicked in this earth influenced by him okay where we can quench all the fiery darts by faith okay not some but all um but one of the wiles of the devil and it's a big one is unforgiveness okay um second corinthians 2 10 through 11 it tells us to whom you forgive anything i forgive also for if i forgave anything to whom i forgave it for your sakes forgave i it in the person of christ lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, and this word devices, it means his purpose, his disposition, his thought. And remember, it's all ill will. It's all to deceive us and to bring death, and he does not like us, okay? So if we're not ignorant of his devices, we have to know and understand unforgiveness is a big one, okay? We're told in Matthew 18, 32 through 35, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because you desired me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due him. 
So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you, from your hearts, forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Okay, this is serious stuff. When it says here he was delivered to the tormentors, it is right here, Satan will get an advantage of us. Okay, when you're delivered to the tormentors, that's not good. That is being turned over to the other side for a good spanking, for some purging, okay? Um, and then in Mark 11, 25 through 26, it says, When you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Okay, this is serious. If you're in a spot of not being forgiven by God, you know, that is in a spot of, of uh, eternal danger, okay? So we would have, we need to repent. Um, but, you know, this goes with, like, we all know the word says, you know, you reap what you sow. But also, we need to sow what we reap from God. It's like when he forgives us, we should forgive others, okay? And then anger is another one. Um, we know from the story of Cain and Abel, you know, him murdering Abel, he was angry, okay? The word tells us anger does not work the righteousness of God. Or, well, the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. But it, we're told in Ephesians 4, 26-27, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. So again, like we, if he can get an advantage of us for unforgiveness, he can also have a place through our anger. And usually anger, if you just break it right down, it's usually from unforgiveness. And when you're angry with someone, if you just forgive them, then that anger wouldn't remain. Um, but anyways, and then he also uses... Um, like the word tells us, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Um, we're told in 1 Peter 5, 8-10, through 10, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And, you know, I just want to stop here for a minute, because this word, be sober. You know, when we look at our, our uh, world today, there's so many people that are addicted to alcohol and drugs, you know. And so when the Lord says be sober, we really need to be vigilant about that. Take heed because it's bad out there. And I even learned of a new drug the other day called Trank, and it's horrible. It's the most addictive drug ever, and it eats the people's flesh. It's absolutely horrifying. And these things come from the enemy seeking whom he may devour. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And we're told whom resist steadfast in the faith, remember? Of our faith quench all the fiery darts of the wicked okay knowing and this is something we need to know that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world but the god of all grace who's called us unto his eternal glory by christ jesus after that you've suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you so we are to know you know that that things happen in the believer's life we know we're appointed to tribulation we enter the kingdom of god through much tribulation but it is brought that we might be perfected, okay? And then there is that issue of discipline, which also, you know, is part of our perfection. Um, we're told in 1 Timothy 3, 6 through 7, and this is concerning somebody wants to hold the office of bishop, okay? It is said they cannot be a novice, okay? They can't be a new convert, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil, Okay, so pride is the very thing that brought Satan down because he said, I will be like the Most High. I will sit in his seat, even in the mount of the congregation. Okay, he wanted God's worship. He wanted to be in place of him. And his pride got him where he is today. And his pride will get him where he's going in the future. So when you look at a new convert in the church, you know, if you haven't learned very much, pride pride is just in the heart of man, in their minds, okay? We have to renew our minds and we have to have our hearts purified. And that is why a new convert cannot be in a place of, should not be in a place of leadership because they will fall, okay? We have to be prepared first. And it says, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, you know, like outside of the church, lest he fall into reproach. And the snare of the devil, okay? And this is a trap, okay? So it is like we, we have like we have to be vessels made fit for his use. And this reproach has to do with sin. Because sin will always lead you into a trap, okay? Um, and then you can throw false doctrine in there with sin when it comes to being taken 
in the snare or trap of the devil. It says in 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Okay, so opposing themselves, it means they set themselves opposite of the truth of God or the ways of God. Okay, and it says, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they might be that they might recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, his trap, who are taken captive by him at his will. Now, when you first looked at this, when you look at it, you might think they're taken captive by the devil at his will. But that's not the case because it says if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Okay, so for whatever reason, it's just like what we read about forgiveness. If we do not forgive from our hearts, God will give us over the tormentors. And this is the same thing here, okay? If they're opposing themselves, they're setting themselves opposite of truth, opposite of the Lord's ways, then, you know, he will allow them to be taken captive into that snare, that trap. Okay, um, and you know, everything comes from instruction. I mean, that's, we battle by the word of God, okay? And that's why the, these people are instructing them, okay? It's instructing them in truth. First Timothy 4, 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly, then in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So we can see from this here that, you know, there are teachings that are demonic, Okay, they, they draw you away from the truth, away from life. Okay, Revelations 18.2, concerning Babylon of the last days, it says he cried with a mighty, mightily, sorry, cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, fallen, is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Okay, these things are all demonic entities, okay, evil spirits. And when it says Babylon is fallen, fallen, it's just like Lucifer. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Yes, he was cast out, but he's spiritually fallen too, okay, from that pride. Um, so we see, you know, it's just yucky stuff out there on the other side, and we want to be free of it. Ephesians 2, 2 through 3, it says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, or, you know, its, its path. Hey, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, and that is Satan. And even, you know, his cohorts, they're right along with him. Okay, among whom also we all had, okay, before we were born again, we had our conversation in times past, and our behavior, our words, both, okay. In the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay, so we see this is having to do with our flesh and our mind here. And, and the devil does, he has mind games galore. And they are all lies, lies, lies. And this is why we re need to renew our mind to the word of God. And we need to crucify our flesh, okay? 2 Corinthians 10, 3-4 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And that's the same as... You know, when, when the Lord spoke to Satan and not Peter, okay? Because he knows. it's the, the, the war is not against humanity, but against the powers. Okay, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of man. They're not of this world, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what? Imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That being exalts itself against the truth of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we can see this is mind things. Um, so Ephesians 6.12 tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, again, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, these are high things that exalt themselves against the truth. And they try to get us to go along with them all the way right into hell in the lake of fire. Okay. Um, James 4, 7, it tells us, you know, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And notice it says flee. And it, this always reminds me of when Jesus said, the prince of this world comes and he has nothing in me. Okay. There was nothing in Christ that he could touch. But if we have false doctrine, if we have sin, if we have unforgiveness, anger, 
you know, all the things he uses to trap us, okay, then he has a way to touch us. So that is why we need to renew our minds and let our hearts be purified, that we might be untouchable by him, okay? We have to crucify our flesh. Anyway, so Acts 19, 15 through 16, and this is when they were trying to cast out a demon, and uh, the evil spirit answered, and he said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. Oh, yeah, it was the seven sons of, I think the man named Sceva or something like that. Anyways, but it leaped on them, overcame them, prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Okay, so this is why if you're not submitted to God, you know, you have no power against the enemy. Okay, Revelation 16, 13, it says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. They were not frogs. They were like frogs. He saw them come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world. Okay, they go to the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And even now today, you can see the whole world being gathered against Christ. They're in opposition to the truth. They're in opposition to God. Okay, but notice these unclean spirits like frogs come out of their mouth. So it's not that they look like frogs. It's that they, it's because when you look at a frog, okay, like a frog, a frog jumps. He jumps far and he jumps fast. Okay, and that's what happens far and fast to this whole world to gather them all against the Lord. And it's even being done today. It's in the works. It's been in the works, okay? But it's definitely picking up pace in this, this last dark day. 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, we have, we have received not the spirit of the world, okay? We didn't receive that spirit that works in the children of disobedience, Satan, or any of his unclean, you know, campers that go along with him, okay? But we received the spirit which is of God that we might know. Again, here's something we need to know. The things that are freely given to us of God. Okay, he's given us all things. But this particular thing is important. Jesus did not leave us who love him powerless. Okay, and it's very interesting that these very words, when he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. We know from that first scripture we looked at, he comes down having great wrath. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But look what the Lord has said to us. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy again our take up our shield of faith it quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one okay all he gives power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven okay so this is important to know that with all the devil's wiles and devices and that, we are safe as long as we're submitting to God and we resist him. Okay, we will get the victory. We will overcome all his fiery darts. Okay, and the truth is that the devil and his angels, okay, those demons, they live through the flesh of men. Okay, and this is why we must crucify our flesh and we must renew our mind. Genesis 3.14, it says, The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust shall you eat. Okay, this is how he's going to... I mean, when God says to us, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So we know that we live by eating, you know, the bread of the natural, you know, foods of this earth. But we will have eternal life, okay, through the word of God every word that proceeds out of his mouth. But he's telling the serpent here, dust shall he eat all the days of his life. Dust will be his nourishment. And it says in Genesis 2, 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed, nostrils, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became, man became a living soul. So you see here what it is that um, the enemy thrives on okay the flesh of men and you know this is where he seeks rest and recreation and we're given the scripture here for understanding of that um i'm going to read the middle part first okay it says when oops in the word when 
is missing here. I must have accidentally cut that out when I copy, copied and pasted some stuff because I'm trying to keep, you know, these things short. Um, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest. Okay, when he's outside, when spirits are outside of a man, they're seeking rest. And in this word rest, it was intermission by implying recreation. Okay, and recreation is the activity done for enjoyment. So when God said, you know, dust shall you eat all the days of your life, that is what they thrive on. Okay, the flesh. And it says when he's gone out of a man, he's seeking rest, he finds none. Okay, because he has to be inside of a man. They have to be inside of a man to have any enjoyment, I guess you could say. Okay, then, okay, so after he's he's gone out of the man, he can't find no rest, he says, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he has come, he finds it empty. Notice it's empty, there's nothing in it. Nothing, okay? Swept and garnished. And, he go, and then goes he, and he takes with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. Now, I know a lot of people look at this in, in different ways, but what I want to show here is that if you go read this whole chapter 12, verse 41 through 45, if you read the, that whole portion, you will find that he's talking to these people. He says, the men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment against you. And he's talking to his generation, that the people that rejected him when he walked the earth. And he says, the queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation. Okay, those who rejected him. And so it's kind of interesting. He's talking about, you know, you reject me and these other people. Because Nineveh, you know, he sent uh, Jonah there to preach to them to repent. They repented. And obviously the queen of the south was the one that came um, to Solomon, if I remember right. And she was just impressed with his wisdom from God. And I think she began to, you know, believe God honor God so these very people and these people are not even God's people they were of the Gentiles the heathens okay and he says they're going to rise up in judgment with you this generation who rejected him because here's why and it's interesting that he's he's talking about demons okay the reason why he's talking about it being so with this generation is because in Acts ten thirty eight it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all, all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He went to his people. He healed all their diseases, their sicknesses. He cast out all their demons. But yet they rejected him. So that is why he said the last state okay, of that generation would be worse. Because those devils he cast out, they were going to come back with seven more wicked than themselves. And the last state would be worse than the first. And on that note, let's take a look at Legion. You know, the, the man who was possessed um, with when Jesus said, Who are you? And they said, We are Legion, for we are many. Let's take a look at this man. Because this shows us things about demon demons and the devil, you know, that are common denominators. And so you can go read these whole, I'll give you the scriptures, Mark 5, 2 through 13, uh, Luke 8, 27 through 33, and we're going to look at Matthew 8, 28 through 32, okay, concerning these uh, demons. But in the first one, Mark 5, okay, it tells us that the man was crying and cutting himself with stones. I find this very interesting, this cut, people cutting themselves, it still goes on today, we can know that that is demons, okay? and crying okay they, they bring depression they bring you know miserableness no good thing it says no man could bind him the chains that had been the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him so note here okay they have superhuman strength but also no man can deal with it okay it has to be the lord and his power and then it says, but when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshipped him. Now this is where it gets interesting to me. So he worshipped him and he cried with a loud voice. What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that you torment me not. Okay, and then it also says, and he besought him much. Okay, not a little bit, but a lot. That he would not send them away out of the country, you know, out of the region, out of the land. 
Okay, and also all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So they really, really didn't want to be sent out of the country. Okay, and I, I just want to show you, if you go to the Luke 8 portion of the same story, it says they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And when you look that up, it means the abyss, the bottomless pit. So when it says they besought him much, that he wouldn't send them out of the country or out of the land, they're saying out of the earth into the abyss. And that is why they sought him so much. And that is why they said, torment me not, because they would be tormented to go there. If when they leave a man, they walk through dry places and they find no rest, no recreation, nothing to you know, make them happy, obviously, if they have to go to the bottomless pit, it's beyond being in a dry place. It's being in torment. Okay, so that is why they besought him so much. Anyway, so, you know, and Jesus forthwith, he, he gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Okay, there were about 2,000 pigs, okay, and they were choked in the sea. They died in the sea. Now, the interesting thing here I find is that, one, they worshipped him. They knew exactly who he was. Okay, and they didn't they didn't just worship him like, oh, we praise you, Lord. No, like it says here, when they saw Jesus, um, they cried out and they fell down before him. Okay, they fell on their faces in worship. Okay, and, and they have no power outside that which God gives them. But I want you to note here that this man who was possessed, he wear no clothes. Remember when those other demons, they, they, um, or the man that was possessed, okay, the sons of Sceva were trying to cast him out, and he, and he beat, and the demon in the man beat, beat them and stripped him naked. So for some reason, they have a thing about, you know, taking people's clothes off. Even Adam and Eve were left naked in the garden, you know, it's like a, a thing of humiliation, okay? And this man, he didn't abode, he abode in, in no house. Okay, so you can look at the homeless kind of and think, well, maybe they got some issues going on. Okay, um, but he dwelt in the tombs that was in the graveyard, you know, a place of death. Okay, he was driven of the devil into the wilderness. So, you know, when you're in bondage to the enemy, you don't have free will. You don't have freedom. You're in bondage. You need to be set free. I just find this stuff very interesting. But And this is the last one concerning the same... Uh, oh, wait, I need to read that scripture, did I? Yeah, it says, You believe that there's one God and you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. It ain't no joke. They worshipped the Lord. Okay? They are not outside of his power. Um, Matthew 8, 28-32 tells us that this uh, possessed man was exceeding fear so that no man might p pass by that way. So we know violence... You know, is something that comes from the enemy. Um, and I love this too, okay? Because when he said, you know, they didn't want to be cast out of the land into the abyss, into the the pit, okay? They cried out saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Are you come to torment us before the time? See, because they know they have a judgment coming. Just like Satan, he knows he has a short time. They know they have a short time, okay? And he's saying, are you going to torment us before the time? Okay, and that's when they besought him, let us go away into the herd of swine. And you know, those pigs ran violently down a steep place into the sea and pretty much died. And I think that, you know, the word doesn't say anything about um, demons possessing animals. Okay, it talks about men. Dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You know, on your belly you will go, dust you will eat. So I think that this just freaked the pigs out. You know, I think they were just so unclean and evil and yucky. They just freaked out and ran down the steep place and perished because of their presence in them. Okay, it was so unclean. Okay, and then let's take a look at the angels that sinned. Um, we're told in Second Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. Now notice, now, Satan and his angels were cast to the earth. Okay, but these ones... These are cast to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness and to be reserved unto the judgment. Okay, so these have a judgment coming and they're in hell. Jude 1, 6 through 7, it says, The angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto, again, the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, 
are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay, we all know uh, Sodom was uh, destroyed by fire. Um, but notice, going after strange flesh. So we can know that these are those angels that sinned in the beginning. They went to the daughters of men, took wives. Okay, that's strange flesh. Okay, fornication. Because God made man and a woman to be one, to be married, to bring forth, you know, the fruit of the womb. Um, not angels. So they sinned, okay? And, and when they did that, they, they created giants in the earth. And the giants didn't do men any favors at all. Um, but, okay, so they're set for the vengeance of eternal fire. And concerning that everlasting or eternal fire, we're told in Matthew twenty five forty one, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, this was from the parable of the goats and the sheep. The sheep were obedient, loved God. The goats were not, and therefore they end up cursed into everlasting fire, which was actually prepared for the devil and his angels. And this is why Jesus came to save mankind from that eternal fire. In the end, Okay, Romans 20, verse 1 through 3, it tells us, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. See, right now he's cast to the earth, but he is going to the pit. Okay, and he shut him up, set a seal on him that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Okay, we know from Revelations 118, J Jesus has the keys to hell and death. So whoever this angel was that came down, he had got the key to the bottomless pit, okay? The key to hell. And also, um, you know, after he's loosed for the thousand years, this thousand years, okay, it is... Like the word says, a, a day to the Lord is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. And this is like, we have been almost about 6,000 years from creation. This 7,000th year, it, it, like when God said, six days shall man work, the seventh day he shall rest. Okay, it was a shadow picture of this thousand year time of rest coming when our enemy will be bound. Okay, and we will reign with Christ. We reign with Christ for all eternity, but this thousand year time period, it is that day of rest. Okay, it is a time when Satan will be bound. That's the only reason there's even a time limit on it. Revelations 20.10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, this is after he's loosed for a little season. This time... He's going to the lake of fire, not hell, but the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, this is eternal torment. Okay, the lake of fire is different. Hell's just a holding place. There's torment there too, but this is eternal. Okay, and uh, the reason we can know this is because it says in Revelations 20, Oh, wait, this is the one. So we know Satan and his angels are put in lake fire. But I think this here, death and hell, it tells us in 14 through 15, they were cast into the lake of fire. I think this is just another way of saying Satan and his angels, okay? But we need to understand from this, it's the second death, okay? And whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. And remember, it was prepared for Satan and his angels. That's why Jesus came. He doesn't want man to go there. Okay, but the only way to escape it is to become born again, to have faith in Christ. Um, Revelation 6, 8, this is why I think death and hell are actually talking about Satan and his angels, because it says, I looked and behold a pair of horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And we know that the angels followed Satan. Okay, and they were all cast down. But power was given unto them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And we know Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and so does his gang, okay? But concerning this second death, okay, this lake of fire, we know from Scripture we're told the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, nor the second death, because of Revelation 26, verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, and such the second death has no power, Okay, and this is because we have eternal life with Christ. Okay, and in Matthew 10, 8, um, concerning, you know, sowing what we reap from God, this really speaks to me. 
Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay, we have this power freely given to us of God. And we are commanded to do these things, okay? Luke 4, verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, okay, we have Christ in us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, the church, because he's anointed us, me, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us, me, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. I mean, think about the people bound by Satan today. It's just horrible. Recovering of sight to the blind. Remember, he blinded the minds of those who do not believe. But when they hear the glorious gospel of Christ, they can be set free. Okay, And to set at liberty them that are bruised. You know, the devil's done horrible things in this earth. And we have freely received from God the power that we might go set the captives free according to God's will. And I just pray that we would do this. Okay, And I hope something in this study you know, concerning, you know, the truth about the devil and demons. I hope something in here has spoken to you and increased your faith and has given you knowledge of the power that you have in Christ to set people free. And may we all go out here and keep God's word. May we forgive. May we not let the sun go down on our anger. May we, we, we avoid sin. Okay. May we get free from any false doctrine by receiving and seeking the truth because time is short. Just like the devil know, knows he has a short time, we also have a short time, okay, in this earth. Our, our life is like a drop in the bucket. You know, all the nations are like a drop in the bucket, I should say. But our life is just a vapor. So may we stand up and go in the name of the Lord and do his will. Amen.